driven, and the high tide is not very welcome where she lives because sometimes it comes under the high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is really spring tide, we call it, but it's in October. So the spring is not the season, it means the water springing forth. Oh. And this really captures the essence of that. Thing. There again, I paint wet on wet. But in the last uh, year or more, or more than that, five years, I am painting in lighter colors. And I, I never have painted exactly the same way all my life. It's always been something that I used to, I have done many things many years ago with heavy impasto and palette knife and scrubbing the color in, I still do a little of it. But this is, uh, seems to be what I like best now. This is her plantation, starting the plantation scene that she loves to yeah, This is, um, okay. no, this is Hopeton on the Altamaha Hall. Two rivers form the Altamaha Hall River, the um, Oconee and the not the Oconee. Yes, Oconee and the Okmulgee. And they come together up in North Georgia at some point. I can't remember exactly where. North of Macon, isn't it, somebody? Mm -hmm. And it forms the Alton Hall. Uh, John Cooper uh, is best known by, by, to a lot of you now by the fact that Eugenia Price wrote her last book, or the next to last, maybe about Cannon's Point Plantation. I see you nodding your head because you, you have read, I know, Eugenia's books. Uh, uh, John Cooper was, came from Scotland in 1820, just as did many other uh, English people and, and Scottish people who heard about this land in Georgia that was up for grabs in many ways and was uh, you know, um, offered in a lottery or maybe inherited from, by some of the people who came to Vogelbach. My husband and I went to England, um, um, I think it was 1960 or something, and we were amazed that, that people in England didn't seem to know um, about who General Vogelbach was. <laughs> and um, all we could find out, and, and it puzzled me, and after he passed away, I decided that I would go back to England at some point. I didn't know when, but I would go back and tell these English people um, about General Oglethorpe. Uh, everything on St. Simon's is named Oglethorpe or Frederica or Frederick. I live on Frederick Road. And in Albany, Georgia, we had streets of the name Oglethorpe and the monument and so forth. So it seemed incredible. But it took me 10 years, but I went in 1978. I carried nine suitcases of um, art by different artists all over Georgia, all watercolors, and I had an exhibition across the street from the house that General Overfolk owned. Some of this was arranged by friends that I had made, and that was, Mildred and I went back to uh, uh, that's in Godalming, which is where Old Father was born, in Surrey, which is 30 miles south of, of London, when we went back to, to um, was it three years ago? Mm -hmm. No, it was six. Six? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, then, time marches on. Yes. Um, there was the same house, and we, it was fantastic to just go, also fantastic, to, to, I think, Miller, to realize that the cab driver we had we were the guide. He didn't know, know where we were. <laughs> I'd say, now there's General Oglethorpe's home. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he'd ever been out of, um, out of London. <laughs> this is Christ Church. This is the church that I belong to and Miller belongs to. And it's the church that um, Oglethorpe, not this building, but that he found it when he first uh, stepped on the soil at, uh, what is now Frederica. Um, it, this building was built in the 1890s, and it was built by Anson Phelps Dodge. And it's a, the story of this building is really the reason that Eugenia Price came and um, uh, began to write all the wonderful books, the historical novels that she wrote.
these are books that Mill and I have written about the plantations. These are the only ones we have in print now. This is a uh, red one in some Hampton Plantation. The lady over there is uh, Fanny Kimball. Fanny Kimball, who who lived at a uh, short time, just about three months at Hampton Plantation. If you are familiar with any of your history where we live, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if not, I'll be happy for you to ask me some questions, try to answer. Before you leave Christchurch, I'd like for the artist in here to this is something interesting from a gallery point of view, or a gallery owner's point of view. When Mother's changed her style a little, yeah. one of the reasons you don't mind if I do this now, because no. I think the students will yeah. uh, you note on this that she's left a lot of white, unlike a lot of the rest of her paintings. And part of the reason she's not getting older, we won't say that, but if she gets more mature. Yeah, we, we take on sort of an easier, what's easy for you that you can still do. And so she had a wonderful artist named Clyde Smith from Connecticut was visiting in a studio, a portrait artist. And I could tell she liked him a lot and respected his opinion. And so he, she said, she let him see one of her Christ churches similar to this. And he said, Mildred, stop, you're finished now. Yeah. So from then on, she, uh, there's not many in here now, but this one is that way and there might be one other one where she leaves, you know, the, she, she just, she, it's sort of contemporary looking, really. I like this stuff. She's, she's done a lot of them like this. Well, thank you for letting me get that in. You're welcome, Bill. Mm -hmm. This is another view of um, Monet's. I love to put my hands on. Another, another thing about canvas that she's always told me is that she loves the feel of canvas. It's something about yes that it responds where it's well, it speaks, it speaks back to you. It speaks to you. It's an emotional thing. Uh, I have been painting on uh, pulp paper from the Georgia Pacific Company, which has a branch in Brunswick, Georgia. And when they heard that I was her paint, doing all her paintings on um, pulp, which is their basis of many things, you know, that they that they don't produce, but it's the, the basis of what goes to do all kinds of things. They had me to come down to um, to um, the mill and go through the the paper mill, which I was delighted to do because um, oh, I wondered why. I had never done that before, and I, I did so much with watercolor paper, with drawing. So, if you, are you from any of you familiar with pulp paper? We have one in Rome. Huh? We have a mill in Rome. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they can tour it if they like. I <laughs> went went down to um, went down way through there. It was wonderful to see the the logs go in one end and come in different stages chips and then be fed into something else and and come down in a river of like white like milk and that then was another process and it was rolled up into into pulp paper and uh, I had to have a it was about a half a mile walk to go through the plant. I had to have a guard with me I had a life uh, support or what in case something happened I couldn't breathe or something great great experience so then um, the uh, <clears throat> officials asked me if I would do a painting an oil painting on this pulp paper I said of course and um, I did a lot of experimenting but it simply it was simply a matter of sealing the porous quality of, of the pulp it, it wasn't it takes a while, you know, I used all kind of things to seal it. And so I think I brought one picture up here, print of the, I did one large one for them of the uh, Coast Guard station. Uh, there again, I'm um, always uh, interested and totally committed to as fast as I possibly can do to preserve those things that are, that People are looking at just as how many houses can I get on this piece of land? We'll tear that old thing down, and that's what we have uh, in uh, um, on the islands. 
And I think one of the things, knowing Mother, as I do, but from a, an art gallery point of view also, and it's uh, uh, her background is she's as much of a historian and writer as she is a painter. The three things come together, art, beauty, and history. Uh, that's, that's equally important to her. It shows up in her art, I think, with great feeling. She preserves a lot of the well, landmarks. I, I love old things. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I, I love old pieces of furniture. I love. Oh, I also love young young people too. That, that's <laughs> something that Mildred and I do. We did one uh, session uh, two or three years ago up at Somerville. We spoke to to uh, children in the second and third um, grades. Uh, a big small, a big percentage. Of, didn't know anything about the culture of the coast of Georgia, and we talked with uh, our governor once about it, and he said, well, why don't you go and tell these children in some uh, area that probably have never seen the ocean? And so some of them was the place we went, and then we went to Albany last year, we'd probably go to two more this year. I love second and third grade children. <laughs> And I feel very sorry for them now because they're learning to be old people before they really, um, they're learning to be, do things by computer before they've really grown up to me. And to see their faces when they see me standing around holding a live crab and, and the claws going this way and their eyes are this big. Yeah. <laughs> then I put it on the floor and they run that I show them yeah. how you step on it. And, we carry the shrimp and we carry the culture a, of the coast. And there's an art in that, really, you know. Mm -hmm. Art takes so many different forms, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was just thinking either even what you wear, is your body's a piece of artwork, really, when you think about it. What you put on and how you present yourself. It doesn't have to be the most, the fanciest thing, but it's, it is an art form. Yeah, I'm very, very concerned about how I present myself. <laughs> <laughs> My hair today is done by a dog. Right, since you've said since you've said this, I'll have to tell them one story on you, okay? Because you've got a good sense of humor. When we made this trip, and so do I, you have to have. <laughs> but we made a wonderful trip together and uh, she said, finally she said, I can see the only way to for this trip to work out with the two of us sharing a room the whole time and being so close together is to let you make all the plans and have your own way. That's the way. Always go into the motel room and say, which room do you want, Mary? <laughs> we, we made two trips recently when the hurricane Bertha was coming to us and the mother one, and uh, I don't ever want to be in a hurricane. Well, Mother leaves three days before the voluntary evacuation starts. We have to leave, so we have a, I have a routine now. It's easier for me to, you know, to go on and evacuate. Well, we make a, we make a, a little, call. we make a little trip away from home, you know. Mm -hmm. it's it's nice. right. We meet a lot of people that are fleeing also from Savannah and Hilton Head and all that. Uh, one of the things, uh, there was something interesting happened to you yesterday here. I saw Romulus and Remus in front of your thing, and I lived in Italy, and the people I was with uh, pointed out, and I stopped and got out to read the inscription and all for Mussolini, and that was tw 1928. That was before he was so involved with Hitler, which prompted me to think about the time we saw Hitler's watercolors in Washington, D.C. Hitler mm -hmm. did beautiful watercolors. I have two of them reproduced right. by a friend of mine who worked at the Pentagon mm -hmm. and carried me. I was having a show with, uh, with, uh, in the um, Congressional Hall with uh, Stuckey, Congressman Stuckey. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and, uh, she said, wouldn't you like to see uh, Hitler's watercolors? And I said I had no idea he was anything but a house painter, you know? <laughs> But we went down into the bowels of the Pentagon, which was an experience for mm -hmm. that I will never forget. And uh, they had guards outside. Guards outside, guarding all of the. I didn't know. I really never knew um, where all the artwork in the world that you read and hear about was confiscated in different wars. But if it's in mm -hmm. this country, it's in the 
And hip and Mussolini's cake was there. And that's what reminded me, that's why I started the story, was that that. Well, this it, friend had these, these were beautiful watercolors, and I have them in black and white. One is a house scene, the railroad tracks, and the other one is a, a, a tunnel. Tunnel was a tunnel with a train. But anyhow, why I was bringing this whole thing up is interesting what happens, because I had a chance to show these at the gallery, and it was very unpopular. And the, I talked to a man in Washington, D.C., who owned the gallery, about it. he said, I could have too, but he said, <laughs> it would have just a very unpopular thing still to show. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. That he was, he was a very fine watercolor painter, and they say he was so frustrated he was not accepted in art school that he tried to get in. I mean, people speculate to say what would have happened if he had ever if he'd been accepted. You know, they wish that he had been accepted. Yeah. Yeah. I so. want to commend the student body here who helped Mildred uh, arrange this uh, mm -hmm. exhibit. I, I think see some of them who are here now. Clever, yes, and yeah. darling, and I love yeah. what they did with this. Right. And you, you all did this, uh, did the swing. Uh, That's uh, John uh, Shaw and Martha. Where's Martha? Martha's, Martha's, up here Martha's, Martha's just getting a telephone call. Was that Martha? But what I wanted, the other thing, um, um, Steve and Brian wanted me to sort of mention, I was telling them about how I felt about arranging the dolls and all, because it's an art form in arranging them. And they were so happy that you all helped me. And we were just talking about what makes people want to help, you know, put on something and all. And, I think it's an energy that comes together and either we like each other's personality or something happens that we're all involved and it's very important. It looks like it might not be in a show, but you have to care about every little thing and fixing this the way you did and cared about it really is bringing the show together. You did the swing? Uh -huh. And so uh, that when you if you get into the gallery business or whatever it is in your art, every little detail it seems like it's we're nitpicking, but you're not. And the fact that you showed all your creative talent, I've never done it like this. Now that's what we have needed to do. You really helped bring it to life. We got tickled with Jason and the boys too. They got you did. into it. He he wanted to take a bite out of cookie to make it look like he was really. He eating did. Cookie. And I thought that was crazy. <laughs> And nobody noticed I put a telephone on. I did. Well, you are good. Uh, I would like to say that there are no shortcuts in life to me in achieving what you want to do, whether it's to be an artist or whatever. I am very glad, and this is hard to say, that I was, came up in the era that I did in which we weren't pushed to do anything. We, weren't, we didn't have to hurry. I came up in an era of, of course, I wish I had about 50 more years, but I'm sure you I know. don't. <laughs> but what I'd like to say to you that it takes time, focus on what, and take the time to do it. You who are in your teens and early years now, um, uh, bombarded on every side with um, uh, what can you do so, you, with fast everything, fast food, fast shortcuts, uh, computer. computer, everything. We did things, uh, were exposed to doing things um, uh, both uh, stolidly and, per and with more perse perseveration. perseverance. perseverance. I hope I've gotten my point across. Yeah, fine. Don't be in a hurry to become the greatest that you want to be before anybody else. You know when you've achieved it, if you have, you know, gone at it right. Um, and you'll have it inside yeah. yourself, you'll know. I know I've had people, and you have too, that have tried to say, well, why are you taking so long ago? You could just do it this way, but that would just be covering up and doing it, but it would not last. So that's what you have to, when you know it yourself, when you've done it well and you, you can talk about it. And that's another thing about art, practice and writing and all that is important because you need to learn to write about your art. You know, another yourself. thing, Mildred, that you and I have always said when after we have a show, 
many people say will say, uh, well, how, how how was it? How much money did you? Oh make? yes. How much you spent? And this is I never something tell I hate to hear, but that's so is not success. See, uh, mm -mm. success is did you do a good job? Did people like you? Mm -hmm. That's right. And and that's putting it very bluntly. And that you like it too. That's right. Do you students have any questions? Yes. I wanted to ask you, what is it particularly that you liked about Bob when you were collecting the work, or what just sparked your interest? For me? In uh -huh. Well, okay, thank you. I was supposed to have gone into that, and I didn't. I was trying to think about Mother doing some of her things here, and I, I lost my train of thought a little bit. But what's, what spurred me on was study. I studied it, I liked it from the beginning, and then I delved more into it. And I have a, a, I'm fascinated with Andre Derain and have a small painting of his, not valuable like the Fauve period, but because I was able to get that from a woman that I liked a lot in Auntie France, she took me by the hand and showed me a lot. So I had a mentor that sort of nourished that. And from then on, that was about 25 years ago, from then on, I just couldn't get enough books and all of that. And then I was, I was fortunate to have a, my late husband indulged me in France to encourage me to learn about this, and we went to every place he painted and shot to, every bridge. That put me in touch with all the folks, well, Mink and every one of them. So, um, in a non-scholarly way, I became an expert on it. And then one thing happened recently that made me feel good. I was at a bank in New York, and they had to auction an Andre Darren painting off, this banker did, and casually, not thinking anybody from Georgia could be any help, he said, we can't get it um, authenticated. And I said, well, he said, there's one person in Paris. And I said, I'm, I said, Mr. Kellerman. And he said, how do you know? I said, I know him. And so I was able to introduce them to the aunt of Darren, and they have already seen her and are probably going to be able to auction this painting. The one thing I didn't do was say, give me a piece of action. <laughs> but that's not in my nature. So anyhow. That's, you become, for many reasons, it, you, it becomes passionate really with you that it's like uh, anything that you become interested in, you study more, don't you think? Sure. And you, you want to learn about it? And this school of Xenia came after that, and so I did the same way in it. I found every, every artist in that school of Xenia. I consider photography a, a true art. Uh, I've shot pictures around the world, traveled many places, and until the last uh, 15, 20 years, paid not much attention to it, because I just snapped as I went along, you know, and, and uh, but more and more, uh, I feel like um, that uh, in painting, I can't beat God in painting the world. I can't possibly. I can do something creative that is me, but with a, with a, with a camera, you can prove you didn't, you, you didn't used to feel that way. No. I don't think either of us did about the time. I tire. really feel I'm it. I'm liking it more than accepting it as I an put, art form. I put it on more of a pedestal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's because this you're is, getting good at it, too. Well, you know? this is my, well, I do it effort, effortlessly, I will say. Uh, that happened to be my favorite spot growing up, and uh, my father would throw a shrimp net the same place that's on St. Simon's. That's down about two miles from the Red Barn, which if you've been there, you know where I'm, what I'm talking about. And uh, Mildred threw a net the same way. When I saw that boy and had no idea who he was, I just snapped my little camera. And when I had it developed, I looked at it and I said, to myself, this is a piece of art. Oh, let me tell you something funny about this. I haven't even mentioned it to you, but we had this large painting in the gallery. Of, I mean, the large photograph, bigger than this, framed beautifully of mothers. And it was for sale, and a beautiful blonde woman came in, and she said, uh, I'd like to buy this. She said, I know who this person is. She said, he's my boyfriend. I said, fine. So we gift wrapped it. and. Uh, she gave it to him evidently. We didn't know. We don't know this man. I don't know him. 
But uh, he's got something because three weeks later, another woman came in, blonde. <laughs> and we had another, you know, we had another picture. We had another one up because it doesn't say anything that we can't have more than one. And so the lady I have that works with me doesn't have as much good as, she has a good sense of humor, but she has what I call a blank sort of poker face. And so she, I saw her face, so when this lady came in and she said she wanted to buy this picture that she knew this man. And so, she said to me, she said, what should we do? I said, don't do a thing. I said, that's none of our fair. So he's got lots of these pictures. He had a lot of girlfriends. <laughs> but I thought it was interesting. We're waiting now this Christmas to see if anybody else is going. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a historic spot that meant a lot to me. Growing up, learning to throw a shrimp net by my father and then uh, seeing my husband do the same thing, only we'd be in a rowboat and then we always carried our three children fishing. They, they, I don't remember seeing Mildred actually throw the net. He might have, <laughs> have, he might have pulled it in after uh, somebody threw it. Mildred, what is the, the one over here that's picture house? That's Cannon's Point. Cannon's Point. The same. No. John no, this is Hope. Yeah, that's Cannon's Point Plantation. Well, Cannon's Point belonged to, to John Cooper also. Oh, I see. One thing in conclusion, uh, and then we'd love to have y'all ask some questions if you'd like to, but Mother and I both feel that there's not really any bad art. I don't like it when people say, oh, that's not good. How do they know it's not good? It's from the eye of the book. To me, you can find something good in everybody's art if you look for it. Now, I was, uh, I never I did have any art lessons in college, in college, a few, but in mechanical drawing in Florida State University. But uh, uh, in traveling in the last 50, 50, 55, 60 years, uh, in many parts of the world, I have, have availed myself of every opportunity to paint in any country that I was in. Uh, I, before I'd plan a trip to go, generally with a travel agency, I'd say, where can I paint up? I was on a ship, you know, that teacher's on a ship. So that has been a great thing to me that I realized uh, I was able to, do. everybody can't do that, and I didn't do it until late, late in life. You said you rolled up your canvases and took them that way? Do I? You rolled mm -hmm. the canvases. She cut them. little ones. Yeah. We wrote samples. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, the samples. Then you got did a bigger one. You got home. Uh, Is that your star? And then you did a bigger one from that one. You got home. Oh yeah, I did. I always did the little one, and then mm -hmm. do a big one from. And generally, I would cut it so it, if I had the small one, it would have enough left to to put it on a stretcher. You know? Oh, so you did put it on a stretcher. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, on, on the paper that's made by the Georgia Pacific, the pulp paper, uh, try it sometimes, um, especially with a 6B pencil. That's beautiful.